Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Needs to Be Said. This is Catherine Waddell, your host, and we are here creating compelling conversations. This is Health Wednesday, and we have several guests that are coming today to share with you some different topics. So have your pen and paper out. The herbal pharmacist, Dr. Uh, David Foreman is going to join us, and he's going to talk with us about some healthy ways to eat pasta. So we've been told lots and lots of times that eating starch and bread is bad for us, but he's going to show us a healthy way to eat that and enjoy foods that we love. We're going to hear from Dr. Red Cross and Dr. Horner. We've heard from both of them before. And then we have a, a new person that's going to join us, Sherry Torkels. So we have every healthy topic covered on today. All right. This needs to be said all the while. We're keeping it real, yeah. There's so much to be said. We're going to take our time. We're going to change. The world. You are tuning in today to This Needs to Be Said, TNTBS, and I am your host, Catherine Waddell. There is such a need for people to be able to be truthful today. We've been tactful all around the world, and in the midst of that, trying to fit in so we conform, we want to be accepted. Then one day you ask yourself, what is my truth? While digging through a lot of baggage, gathered from wanting to belong somewhere and not sure what you believe, there's a crying out for all those things that should be said that are not being said. No longer will we pretend that there are no issues to address or that we are only going to talk about certain ones. This show, coupled with our blog site and our website, will be the beginning of you finding your way. There is an elephant in the room. Let's talk about it. You were thinking it, we're going to talk about it. I know I can't please everybody no way, but I don't take this happy smile off of my face. Reaching for the fix and trying to be a best of being the best I can. I know I can't please everybody no way, but I don't take this happy smile off of my face. Uh, reaching towards the sex and trying to be a best son, being the best I can. The best me may not be the prettiest in the world, in the may world. not be a figure eight or well curled. Well my best curled. may not be the greatest singer or performer, yeah. whatever is my best man, I'll gladly on her. Pushing every day to give more and more, knowing God gave it all, so I gladly adore. I'm not going to please everybody, because stressed out and sick will be my natural body. I'm going to be happy while being the best me, so camouflage won't be what you see. Trying to be a best son, being the best I can. I know I can't please everybody no way. Cause I'm gonna this happy smile off of my face. Uh, reaching towards the sex and trying to be a best son, being the best I can. Everything about life is a process. Simply overnight, I can't become my best. Thankfully, I see the best in me. Focusing on him so I'll see what he sees. What he shows me you may not understand, but the best me he holds in his hands. The best me comes from following him, pleasing the world, man, I'll only be condemned. I know I can't please everybody no way, cause you this happy smile off of my face. My face. Reaching towards perfection, trying to be a best son, being the best I can. I know I can't please everybody no way, cause you this happy smile off of my face. My Towards the sex and trying to be a best 
trying to be a victim, being the best I can. It's not about religion, not about culture, simply being who I am to be. Allow my spirit to show me my identity, forever growing, serving what inside of me. Give it your all, give it your all, baby. Give it your all, give it your all, baby. Being me is the best I can be. I define my identity. I can't please everybody. No, I can't please everybody. Mm-hmm. I can't please everybody. No, I can't please everybody. Hello, everyone. Our friend, Dr. Foreman. I don't say Dr. Foreman. Pharmacist Foreman. Are you a doctor? Should I call you doctor? Uh, He's our herbal you, pharmacist. You, you, can, Hi, you, can just call me, you can call me Super Dave. Super <laughs> Dave. Wow. Yeah, I'm not, Where I'm do not I get one of those I'm, titles from? He is our yeah. herbal pharmacist, and he's been coming and talking with us about many different things, but it just seems he keeps coming back talking about food these last few times, but I won't hold that against him because he's going to tell us how to eat carbs and still manage to be healthy. So welcome back, Super Dave. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I you know, I I think I don't get all caught up in those titles. You know, when people uh-huh. have a, doc, a doctor this or, you know, I'm, I'm like, no. I mean, but you have like 10 letters behind your name and your bio, so I, you really I, don't I, get caught up in it? Are you sure? I'm yeah, I'm, I don't. I, I have, yeah, I think I, actually, I think there's five, and I don't. I really don't get caught up in it at all. I mean, my background's pharmacy, <laughs> so I have my background's pharmacy. I'm a traditional pharmacist back in the day. I owned a drugstore, so I get three letters for that one: RPH. And then I get a naturopathic doctor degree, so I get two more for that, which is N D. That's like ten more letters and, there, yeah. Yeah. So, I, but I don't. Even, I don't even care. I, you know, for me, it's really. I feel like people sometimes when they see all that or you say Dr. So-and-so, they turn off. It's intimidating. Right yeah. 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 Okay. And I, I so don't wanna, let's just, I don't want to be let's that just way. Let's just red flashy thing, everybody, and pretend I didn't just say that, right? Okay. So here we are today on This Needs to Be Said, and we're going to talk with our friend Super Dave, the herbal pharmacist. Uh, he's the friendly pharmacist. He's going to talk with us about um, healthy ways to eat one of the most popular foods. I don't care where you are in the world. We all like bread and cheese and Topping, and most of us call it pizza. So today we're going to get into this conversation with you, and you don't make me feel bad when you talk about food, just so you know. I just like mm-hmm. the fact that we can talk about food that I like to eat because every time I thought about losing weight or counting calories, I always thought, okay, just leave me with water and paper. But you have um, definitely inspired some conversations. Like the last time you talked about Eat something as simple as eating a handful of almonds every day. It's simple enough. I'm at my desk working. I get a, an urge. I'm hungry. Not really sure what I want to eat. Those nuts aren't going to work against me versus me grabbing a candy bar or something like that. And right. I'm not opposed to eating nuts. So there we are. Um, yeah, so that's good. Give I'm some, glad, some bite-sized, uh, pun intended, bite-sized tips. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. I'm just glad that you hung on to that. That's that's probably one of the simplest health tips for people and and it's something you can keep at your desk and you can leave it there overnight and it's not going to mm-hmm. go bad overnight and mm-hmm. it's yeah i mean almonds or just nuts peanuts by the way don't count everybody so don't tell me about your snickers bar oh, okay I, I, did, I didn't i didn't okay <laughs> well, i won't admit to it anyway let me say that i won't admit all right to good it. good so today you're going to talk with us um about some of the, again, I've talked about pasta, carbs, pizza, um, bread. People love, bre- love bread. But what are some of the latest research? Because many people are determining should they have a low-fat or low-carb diet. What have you, um, what's out there and what's the best approach? Well, you know, probably 40 or more years ago, um, the low-fat, low-cholesterol diet was the big that was the big thing. Um, it started probably right, right as I was going into pharmacy school or before I was going into pharmacy school. And, and so when we did that, you know, we were, we were under the, uh, uh, under the idea that, um, you know, eating fat and eating these certain foods led us to having higher cholesterol and it's what, what made us fat. And, 
And so we migrated away from those foods and we started eating things that were quote light or low fat or no cholesterol. And probably the new biggest buzz thing is no trans fats. So when people mm-hmm. see that, so when people see that because we, we heard trans fats were bad for us or eating foods with cholesterol in it was bad for us, which is a big misconception. That's actually not true. Um, 80% of the cholesterol your, your body has is made by your body from, you know, from things like bread, pasta, pizza, potatoes, rice, those types of things. It's not made from, it's not made from cholesterol. It's not made from the, you know, the fat in nuts and in avocados. And so that, that was a big misconception. So we migrated away from those foods. And so we started eating more pasta because pasta was low fat, no fat, no cholesterol. And we, you know, for me, I was a snacker. I like salty snacks. So for me, it was, I, you know, I'd eat pretzels because it said there was no fat in the pretzels and no cholesterol. What, what we didn't realize and what we're finding out now is the best diet really for health overall and for keeping a healthy weight, healthy blood sugar, healthy cardiovascular system uh, the healthiest diet you can eat out there is actually a low carb and a higher fat, higher protein diet. And, and now let me straighten it out. Like not all carbs are bad. Like you could eat broccoli and, you know, Brussels sprouts and you could eat apples, you know, you could, those have carbs in them, but they're healthy carbs. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're not all carbs are the same, I guess is what I should say. Like a teaspoon of sugar, you know, has, four grams of carbs it's but it's four grams of sugar as the carb whereas oh, you know okay. if you had a you had a teaspoon of unsweetened you know applesauce um it's not going to have the same negative effect as that teaspoon of sugar on your body so where your carbs come from is is really important so the, the research is showing us that when we migrated away and we went to these light low fat no fat diets we actually did more harm to our body and now we're kind of in this area where we're stuck because the foods we've been eating now and you know i don't know how you were raised but i was raised on we had a vegetable with our dinner and we always had to have a vegetable you know maybe it was a salad and then it was a meat and a and Mm -hmm. a starch you know Mm -hmm. and 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 probably two to three nights a week you know you had pizza night and you had spaghetti night and, you know, and then, you know, one night might have been a, you know, burger with mashed potatoes or whatever. But, you know, we, we ate a lot of starches and, and those starches are, are really what are, are, I feel like making our hugest impact on our, our decline in health mm-hmm. is the starchy, the starchy sugary foods are really where we're spiraling out of control because we, we were programmed 40, 30 years ago oh, man, eat those because there's no fat in those. There's no cholesterol in right. those. Right, But But they're really what's making you fat, regretfully. Not, you know, like all of us, including me. Yeah, you used to work that. <laughs> I got to work, you know, I got to, I got to, you know what, I got to watch. You know what, my, it my needs dad. to be said. So you, you have to shoot the word, but it's just funny because you always try to avoid it. And I know we have our, you know, our self-image things that we worry about, men and women alike. Um, but we, the reality of it is, is, you know, we just need to feel better about ourselves and in that process, eat things that are going to be better for us and the things that might not be so good in moderation. And that doesn't mean you can't have it, and you've said that to us in the past. It's not that you cannot totally have these things. You just want to be mindful of how many of the things that work against you, you, you consume. So right. you're not going to get well, away from saying the word fat. Well, <laughs> and, and, you know, no, exactly. Well, no, it's funny because, like, you know, I, I do worry about it. You know, who wants to who wants to get health information for some from someone who doesn't look healthy? You know, right. I mean, I, I seriously, agree. you know, and, and you know, I, I could show you a picture I took years ago when I, when I was just getting into this, and it was a profile picture from shoulders down, me just wearing a pair of shorts, and I had a gun. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, all right, well, hold on a second. Now you can't be telling people to do one thing and live in another lifestyle. It's hypocritical. True. So, True. so like, to, like, so today's topic, today's topic is really designed around showing people. All right, you know what? If you if you're gonna eat pasta, you're gonna eat pizza. You mm-hmm. you want to have you want to have your toast in the morning. 
or and or you you know you want to you want to have your white rice um this is how you need to do it so that it doesn't have that full on calorie effect like you know i go from i go from 39% to 65% changes in calorie count based on my suggestions today so basically averaging out that all my suggestions that i'm going to give you today will negate on average about 50% of the caloric effect of that food you know who wouldn't who wouldn't want to have you know their their side of white rice and I'm not a big fan of white rice I think it's kind of pointless because there's nothing good left in it but um but who doesn't want to have Some their people white like rice it. And, yeah no I know trust me it tastes good it tastes really good and, or who doesn't want to eat their two slices of pizza and oh, and if based on they, <laughs> well, well no let, let's assume it's an extra large pie okay so we're talking okay good pizza. good all right well so all right let's say four you're gonna have four slices of pizza mm-hmm. my suggestion today is gonna say is gonna well let's say three my my tip on on pizza we'll get to is basically saying you're gonna eat three slices of pizza and if you do what I say it's gonna basically your body be equal to one. Okay. Oh, well, let's get to it. Let's get see? to it. I, know, I like see? it. Yeah, no, I know, you, right? See, I mean, you it, make I mean, up for it. You, you're making up for it. Come on. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> once, in, you know, once, once in a while, you know, I come out with something smart. All right. So, all right. Let's, all right. Let's, let's, all right let, let's talk about. Um, let's talk about pasta and pizza. So this is like category one. So, mm-hmm. pasta and pizza. Again, they're they're not healthy for you because they they're uh starchy foods and just real quick for everyone if you hadn't heard me say it before starches are very easily broken down in your body um into sugar and then when they're broken down into sugar that's when your body can absorb them so if for some reason some way we can keep your body from breaking starches down they will pass through you the way they went in you so they won't have a they won't have a calorie effect on you so with mm-hmm. pasta and so with pasta and pizza, there's sort of two approaches to it. The easiest approach is the one I take, which is I use a uh, a white kidney bean extract, and I think we've mentioned this before. It's an ingredient called Phase Two. It's all natural. It comes from white kidney mm-hmm. beans. So Phase Two. So if you if you go to your local health food store and pharmacy, there's lots of different uh, um, finished products that have it on the shelf, like. Like Natrol has their brand, GNC has their brand, Vitamin Shop has their brand. But the ingredient is called Phase 2, and it's a starch blocker. So if I want to enjoy my warm pizza and my warm pasta, I take Phase 2 before my meal or snack that has that food, and it's going to block up to 65% of the calorie effect. That's where I go when I told you earlier, if you're having three pieces of pizza, if I negate 65%, that's basically two-thirds, or basically I've negated two of those three slices from having a negative effect on on the calorie of, uh, impact on your body. Mm-hmm. Kind of mm-hmm. cool. Kinda, wow. Now the now the other that, benefit. Very very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now the other thing you can do, it doesn't have as significant effect as using phase two. Is you can eat those cold. Um, it's it's kind of weird when we when we eat starchy foods that have cooled back down, actually have gotten cold. Some of that starch is back into a form we call resistant starch, which means your body can't, your body isn't going to digest it. But I don't like cold spaghetti and I don't like cold, I don't like cold pizza. Now I run into people who are like, sweet, I love cold pizza. And I'm like, yeah, uh, no, I'm not not, one I, don't, of them. I don't dig it, yeah. man. I want my, I want my cheese all, almost falling off of it. It's no, so hot. Yeah. Though, you know? Gooey. So, yeah, right. Exactly. So that's, so that's tip one for those people that want to eat bread, even white bread. This is really kind of cool. And white bread is probably the most unhealthy form of bread. And and I always tell people, if you ever saw the grains they, that they start out making bread with, they're usually dark in color. They're either a gray or a brown or something like that. But because of the processing they go through to make white bread, they've stripped all the colors out and the col- and they even bleach the flour. And so if you ever go to the grocery store and you buy white bread, it usually says enriched. And the reason it's enriched is they, they took all the good stuff out of it in the process of making that super white flour to make the bread. 
that it's basically n- nutrient deficient, so they enrich it. They put vitamins and minerals and stuff back in there. But if you want to, if you still want to enjoy your your white bread, and I I've, I shot a TV segment in Detroit yesterday, and uh, and the anchor before we went on air, she goes, "Oh man," she goes, "My my fiance, he just he loves to have white bread toasted in the morning." I'm like, man, you should just give him like a bowl of a bowl of sugar before, you know, instead of the uh-huh. white bread. And I said, but I said I've got a tip for you, and here it is. This is for everybody. If you're still into your your, and it doesn't always have to be white bread. I think it could be any bread. If you keep your bread in the freezer, and right before you toast it, you take it out of the freezer. So you're t- basically taking your two pieces of frozen bread and put it in your toaster and toast it that way. Research has shown that you will uh, lower the effect on your uh, what they call your glycemic index which is how how much sugar now, basically is. Now this is the is. freezer not just the refrigerator. Correct. Out of the freezer. And okay. Actually, it's really fun. It's really funny because I went to college in South Carolina and I live in Florida now and if we keep our bread in the cupboard like most people do it molds mm-hmm. so quick. So I've been I've been I learned years ago when I was in you know college we kept our we always kept our bread bagels whatever um in the freezer because otherwise it'd mold and it stayed fresh in the right. freezer. So whenever you want it. So I've been doing this forever. Like, how did I know that? Maybe that's why I kept my thin figure. I don't know, but, um, really, but it, <laughs> you know, I'm, just, I'm just playing around, but no, you can, you can have a, you can reduce the, the, the glycemic index, um, by 39%. If you do, if you're going to do your bread that way. Mm-hmm. So you can still enjoy wow. your white bread, white bread toasted, mm-hmm. but you're going to have, you're going to have 39% less effect on your body, which I think is. You and know, it's how you're storing it. That makes a difference. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And, and that, and that that's, crazy? I do like my white bread whenever I do have it. Yeah. 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 Well, so. I mean, trust me, I think it, I, you know, I got to say like old fashioned pasta, white bread, it tastes so good because it's easy yeah. to, um, you know, it just tastes good. It, it's, it convert. And you know why it tastes so good? the enzyme that breaks starches down into sugar is actually uh, released in your mouth. So you, you're already, as you're chewing stuff, if you chew it enough and it's a starchy food, whether it's crackers, pasta, rice, potato, whatever, it's going to start turning to sugar in your mouth already. Like that's how oh, wow. quick the effect has. And that's, and that's why we take phase two. Be, really, we try to take it before we eat. Before you eat. So, okay. so, so that that process can't happen and mm-hmm. then and then my last tip is on how you prepare your rice so whether it's white rice brown rice in my example today it doesn't matter personally i prefer brown rice in the way it tastes um but what you want to do when you're cooking your your rice is you want to you want to cook it so for every every cup of rice that's raw Usually we use two cups of water along with it. I want you to throw in a tablespoon of coconut oil. And, mm. and coconut oil coconut oil used to be kind of a weird thing you can only pick up in health food stores, but now you can pick it up at grocery stores. I saw it in Target the other day and I saw oh. it in Walmart. I saw it in Walmart yesterday. So coconut mm-hmm. oil is so easy to the, find, yeah. Yeah, and it's a healthier oil to cook with. So people that like cooking with oils Coconut oil is one of the healthier ones to do. So if you cook your your rice, so this is the way it went. You cook your, your rice like you normally would, but throw in a, a tablespoon for every 